Good evening, and welcome to the fifth annual Civic Service Awards Ceremony presented by the Cupertino City Council. I'm Donna Cray, and I'm the Community Relations Officer for the City. Tonight, we're honoring 16 recipients representing the fields of volunteerism, community, community services, business, education, and cultural arts. The recipients are quite different in what they've achieved over the past year and the work that they perform, but they do have at least one thing in common, and that is they've all given the city the best and most perfect gift that anybody can give. They've given the city the gift of themselves. That's a difficult thing to do, but it's by far the most meaningful gift that anybody can give because it comes straight from the heart. Emerson, Emerson said that nothing great is ever achieved without enthusiasm. And I think you'll see as the council members introduce each of the recipients and go through their, their uh, past histories that this thread of enthusiasm runs through each one of them. Tonight, the city pays tribute to that particular quality of enthusiasm that guides all great efforts. Before we begin the program, uh, I'd like to say a word of thanks on behalf of the city to Apple Computer for letting us use this facility. Also to June Legrand, who's a resident of Cupertino, and she's a professional storyteller. She'll be entertaining us for a little while later on tonight. I'd also like to say thank you to Laura Newman and Dustin McKinnon, two city staffers who worked very hard to get this organized. Um, as the council members read off the names of the recipients, we'd like you to please come up on stage using this route over the flowers and stand, standing, if you can, right on this little square with the arrow. The reason, the reason we're going through all this is that it's being taped live by Cupertino's Municipal Channel 53, and they have their camera angles all set up, so we don't want to disturb that. Uh, you'll be exiting off the stairs there and into the little room where you'll have your picture taken with the mayor. <laughs> Just wait 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> We'd also like to ask the audience to please hold your applause until after all the presentations are made. Uh, now, it's my pleasure to introduce to you the mayor of Cupertino, Reed Sparks. I really tried, you know, the, the, the real mayor, the big mayor in this state, of course, is old Clint Eastwood. I don't know if you've noticed, but he's had the Pope come and he's had all these others. And so today when I was getting dressed for this, I was thinking, gee, wouldn't it be great to get Clint down here? So I gave a phone call and he didn't return it. So he's just going to be stuck with me. Um, you know, this is an event that, you know, the rest of the council and myself are very honored to put on every year. I was thinking just about myself. I had about, oh, I don't know, 23 years of service to the community. I said, gee, what a great deal. I started out in Parks and Rec when I was 13. And then it's, it's amazing, you go through the, uh, the 16 recipients we have tonight, it's something like, uh, I, you know, 17, oh, the cat too, hey, come right over. Yeah, I hate to tell you, Apple's good, they even feed the cats around here, isn't that nice? Uh, we have some, uh, about 440 good years of service out there in the community. And you know, that really is what makes a community, I think, the dedication of the people to it. And, and you can see by tonight how many outstanding citizens we have. Each of the honored guests tonight are going to receive an engraved paperweight, a city logo proclamation signed by myself, and also a proclamation signed by our, our Congressman Ernie Kanye. Um, we are proud also to have Bob Anderson on hand, our city photographer, and you'll get to have a picture with me afterwards. And then please join us at the end for, uh, for reception to be in the back. Without any further ado, I'd like to introduce John Gatto, Mayor Pro Tem, for the first uh, awards. Thank you, Reed. As uh, Reed said, I think this is one of the absolute best nights we have as council members, being able to gather with the community and honor all of you who have put forth so much effort, and usually the unsung type of effort out of the limelight, the hard work type of effort, and believe me, it's a real joy for all of us to do this. And Reed also wanted me to mention that anybody else who wants their picture taken with him, 
for a small fee is welcome to go in the back room. <laughs> <laughs> My category that I have the pleasure of presenting this night is volunteerism. And volunteerism is really the, the true unselfish act. It's the caring and the giving and without, like I said before, without compensation and without many cases recognition. I think that the person that does this does it out of love and does it out of care and it's really a pleasure to be able to honor these five recipients tonight in this category. The first person so honored will be Pat Jackson. Pat, would you come up, please? <laughs> and although Donna said to hold your applause, it might be applause as they come up so we have something to let them know that we appreciate it. Stand on the X. <laughs> Pat has a, a long list of, of items that she's volunteered for, and I know that she's a busy person, and to take time away from her professional chores to aid and abet the community is a real thank you, Pat. And I'll tell you just a few of the items that she has been involved with, because if I gave you the whole list, we might not leave here tonight. She was a member of the Chamber of Commerce Speaker Series Committee. She's been a member and at one time chair of the Age Control of the Architectural Site Committee in Cupertino for the city. She was on the ticket committee for the Bicentennial, which I understand was a very successful event. Unfortunately, I was not able to be here for that. The, she was also a member of the Cupertino Community Services on the Barbecue Committee. She's a host of the League of Women uh, Voters, Government and You, which was a program that the city had on, was it Channel 30? Channel 30 for a couple of years, in which there was a the mayor and a couple other persons on a regular basis were able to speak to the community and had phone in and respond back to the community. She's been a board member and past president of the Quota Club of Cupertino. So you can see that Pat's been a very busy person, has contributed a lot of hours and a lot of gratitude to the city. Pat, we thank you. I think you can. Now is your big moment to take your picture with the mayor. <laughs> the, the next recipient is uh, Margaret Martisich. Is Margaret here? There we are. <laughs> I see you brought your fan club with you. Yeah, that's good. There you go, Margaret. Margaret has spent, if you believe it or not, over 1,000 hours in community services last year. I know people that work that spend less hours than that on the job. <laughs> Some of Margaret's principal achievements has been Cupertino Federated Women's, today's woman chairman, who she researched and introduced a membership program called WATCH, which helped women and children in an abuse program after they completed their initial service in that program. She's also the community services, Cupertino Community Services has been collecting goods and food and other attributes for that service for what, about four or five years now? Seven years, Seven years. see how time flies. And has raised quite a bit of funds and other items for that service. At Christmas time, she sang with a group that visited local convalescent homes. And believe me, I know how much those people appreciate those kinds of visits. A citizen of this, community since 1938, Margaret has cons consistently and quietly donated her loving time and attention. And Margaret, we thank you very much for that. In case everybody's wondering what, what the recipients are receiving, it is a proclamation from the city of Cupertino in a little folder and as a keepsake in this little blue envelope, it's a solid gold nugget. No, it's actually a, uh, <laughs> a brass uh, paperweight or other type of use that has a city emblem on it and a recognition of the individual and what the award was for. The uh, next recipient in this category is Cindy Rothman. Now, Cindy cannot be here this evening, but I understand that uh, Jim Jackson is going to receive the award for Cindy. 
we lose a little bit in color and uh, <laughs> and poked it to it here, but on the, on the on the square, Jim. Come on. <laughs> Once they get out of the city, it's hard to keep them trained, you know. <laughs> Cindy is another person who has devoted quite a bit of time to the community in addition to holding down a full-time job. We can't mention where she works, can we, Jim? Just as a, a, lo a local bank. Well local bank. <laughs> a well-known local bank, yes. And uh, Cindy has been very active in the Quota Club, has been president of that, has also been active in the CCS, Community Services, in a number of different features. She was also involved in the Dickens Fair in some of the promotion there. So without ado, we'll say thank you to Cindy, all of Jim Jackson, and go on. On behalf of Cindy, thank you. Thank you. We'll have a tough time explaining that picture to the group. <laughs> <laughs> the next recipient is uh, Ed Walser. Is Ed here this evening? There he is. Ed is being recognized for his work with the high school's Interact Club, which is especially for the major role he's played in organizing the club's annual trip to an orphanage in Rancho Santa Maria, Mexico. How many years have you gone now? We've been uh, two years, but I've been down there the last three and a half. Yeah. Very, very worthwhile effort. And I know that the Interact Club is, is a very well respected organization at the schools and has been a tremendous asset to the whole school program. So, Ed, we thank you for that effort. And the last recipient in this category is Gareth Wong. As Gareth is coming forward, we'll tell you that Gareth also is involved in the Interact group at uh, Cupertino High School, correct? Yeah. And uh, under his guidance, the Interact Club has performed many hours of service to the community and has earned money for several service projects. I think those of you that aren't familiar with the Interact uh, Club that either do or do not have children in high school should become aware of it. It's a tremendously uh, civic-oriented, very good doing, well-meaning group. And I think that it's a real tribute to these gentlemen, both Gareth and Ed that went before him to promote this action at the, at the high school level. It brings the students and gets them involved in the community in a manner they otherwise probably wouldn't do. And I know that sometimes that these uh, students are thought of as nothing but rabble-rousers, but believe me that uh, with people like the Interact Club, there's a tremendous asset to the community at the high school level. That concludes the group of the volunteerism. Now, as with great pleasure, I'll introduce Barbara Rogers to deal with the next category. Barbara. I'm very proud to be able to participate tonight in this. As John said, the community is really blessed by the people who contribute, and we would not be so good a place to live or work if we did not have people like those who are being honored here tonight, living here and working here and helping here and giving of their time. We have seven recipients tonight who are being honored for their work in the area of community service. I will present awards to four of these individuals and then Councilman Phil Johnson will continue in this category. The first honoree for community service is Charlotte Chastain. <laughs> Charlotte was up here last year to accept an award for an absent recipient, but this time she'll take away one of her own, and it's well deserved. An immediate past president of the Cupertino Federated Women's Club, Charlotte organized the Lifesaver TAG program for Cupertino school children, 
a program that involves distributing tags to youngsters which give permission for emergency medical treatment. She is a dedicated volunteer in Federated Women and also contributes her time to such organizations as Cupertino Senior Citizen Council, Cancer Society, and Cupertino Community Services. She serves as a representative on the Coalition of Aging in Sacramento and recently accepted a Veterans Administration Award for 750 hours of volunteer service this year. She has also received citations from the district, state, and general federations of women's clubs, the award of special merit from the Human Relations Commission of Santa Clara County, and this year she received the J.C. Penney Golden Rule Award. We'd like to add to her collection by giving her this. Our next recipient is Sam Christ, and I'll come down there in a minute. <coughs> Sam says he fights a quiet fight, but the sounds of his success are heard all over this valley. He has a deep and abiding concern for disabled adults who wish to live independently, and because of this concern, he's the founder of a group called Adults Toward Independent Living. Under Sam's guidance, this nonprofit organization purchased a house in Cupertino for the purpose of providing low-cost independent housing for eight disabled residents. Sam spent many hours securing funding and working on the remodeling of this home. It's largely through his efforts that the eight residents of this house share one of the finest facilities in the county. The story doesn't end here, however. Sam secured a second home for disabled adults in San Jose and presently he's working on a third house. He's tireless in his goal to provide much needed housing that offers the op opportunity for disabled adults to lead protective, excuse me, productive, independent lives. His achievements and his goals make him a worthy recipient of this award. Our next award recipient is a group of individuals and not a single person. Accepting the Civic Award for the De Anza Optimists Club is immediate past president Jim Warren. <laughs> the optimists have truly made a difference in our community most notably in their work with the Fremont Union High School District. Last year, the club recognized 10 district students at its annual Student Leadership Recognition Luncheon. The optimists have held oratorical and essay contests specifically for, student, for district students. Working with super schools, club members sponsored a writer's workshop at Homestead, and they also sponsored junior service clubs in three district schools. Two members of the De Anza Optimists Club have served many hours this year on the Fremont Union High School District Budget Committee, a commitment that extends through next year. The optimists finance their activities with the district by holding their famous pancake breakfasts, events that are enthusiastically received by hungry residents at major city celebrations. <laughs> Jim would like for all the optimists here present to stand, please, would you? Our next recipient is Jim Freeman.
Jim was nominated by Cupertino Community Services because of his efforts to better the quality of life in the city through his endless donation of time. Perhaps as important as the number of hours he contributes is his attitude at work. His wife says his best qualities are his sense of humor, patience, and easygoing disposition. The staff at Cupertino Community Services says he's self-sacrificing, loving, and gentle. We believe them all. Jim has served in numerous capacities, including treasurer for the Salvation Army and volunteer bookkeeper for Cupertino Community Services. He's been an active board member for CCS and has participated in many community-wide and Salvation Army events. We congratulate him on recently celebrating his 50th wedding anniversary and thank him for being the inspiration that he is to all those who know him and work with him. And now I'm proud to introduce Phil Johnson, who will continue presenting the awards for community service. Phil. Good evening. It's a pleasure to be here and to be able to continue the awards in this particular category. The first person that I would like to introduce within the Cupertino Community Services category is Patty Froome. Patty? <laughs> Patty is a Santa Clara County Deputy Sheriff who has worked for four years with Cupertino neighborhoods and schools. And she presents the Dare to Say No Drug Prevention Program at Garden Gate School here in the area and organizes neighborhood watch programs throughout the city and is a vital participant in the Cupertino Drug Council. Over and above her normal duties, she has prepared grants for Cupertino, which have brought greater drug prevention and enforcement resources to the city. As a deputy, Officer Froom has a responsibility in these areas, but tonight she is recognized for the extra effort and the extra time that she has put in to achieve more than is, what it, than is expected of her and for the countless number of hours that she's dedicated to her community. So, Patty. Our next award winner is a master at juggling time, Teresa Legenzoff. Teresa? <laughs> Teresa is a dedicated volunteer who is active in many community activities and also is a full-time student at De Anza College and the mother of a four-year-old son. She was nominated for her continued work with the Cupertino Community Services. <laughs> and her volunteer efforts on behalf of the First Baptist Church, Food Drive, the Clothes Closet, the Oktoberfest, the CCS Hoedown, the Country Festival, and the Dickens Fair. Teresa has contributed a great deal of her time to the city of Cupertino, and we're grateful to have such a dependable asset to the, com to the community. <laughs> Our next award winner in this category, and final person in this category, is Laura Lee Sorensen. Laura Lee is, as I said, the final honoree in the field of community services. She is a former school nurse with the Cupertino Union School District and is now an intervention specialist with the district. I'll source of little things here that I didn't know about you. This position uh, uses her talents as a nurse and a counselor in the work that she performs with children and families who need extra services. She is active in many different capacities, including CART, Children at Risk Team, the Cupertino Community Services, 
and chairman of the School Attendance Review Board. In the spring of this year, Laura Lay spearheaded the community's participation in the Attorney General's Challenge for Drug Prevention Programs. And this action led to the formation of the Cupertino Drug Council. And uh, I've known Laura Lee in her capacity as uh, a member and chair of the Planning Commission and all the hours that she has put in uh, helping the council and the city in, in that capacity. So congratulations. Now to make the presentation presentations in the next category is John Plungy. Good evening, and I wish to offer my congratulations also to the previous recipients here. Uh, I know Teresa was a little surprised when she saw her picture. I think it may have been that she, I think, could be the winner of a Sally Field look-alike contest. <laughs> Take a look at that. I also want to offer my congratulations to Gareth and Ed. Uh, it makes me proud to be a member of the same profession with people like that. And finally, Jim Warren, who takes over Monday as my boss at Homestead High School. I want you to know, Jim, I really pushed hard for you to get the award. <laughs> <laughs> I'm privileged now to give the awards in the field of business, education, and cultural arts. And the first of the awards in business goes to Don Allen, president of Cupertino National Bank. And Don is unable to be here tonight, so accepting again because he has access to the vault where he can store these things is Jim Jackson. As a businessman, I mean, many of us know Don. He's been very active in the community for a number of years. I can remember, uh, I don't know if too bad Don's not here. I don't know if he remembers this, but he and I competed very vigorously on who could round up the most used newspapers for the Cub Scouts, and it was a, at times a very active uh, rivalry there. He's given innumerable hours to many active roles in the community, Chamber of Commerce and the like, and particularly uh, in the field of culture in the community, uh, cultural events. If uh, someone needs some help in the community to get an event going, they say, okay, let's contact Don and see what he can do, how he can help, and he always responds. In particular, he's being honored tonight for his role in forming the Leadership Cupertino program, which was a cooperative effort between the city, De Anza College, and the chamber as a program that builds community leadership among individuals. And uh, we're seeing that uh, some of it is starting to pay off in the sense that some of those people in the leadership who have been in the leadership program are now getting involved actively in the, uh, uh, in the community, candidates, uh, commissions, and the like. So it's with great pleasure that uh, on behalf of the city, and I give to Jim the award for Don Allen. I'm really pleased to give this second award in business to Herman Hidgmans. We are given nomination forms here that, uh, and some of them are signed by people, some of the type copy I have is not, and I don't know who wrote this, but I could not have said it better. The person who nominated, when asked why are you nominating this person for a Civic Service Award, said, when I think of the resplendent volunteer, the one who gives of themselves almost without regard to receiving anything in return, I think of Herman Hidgmans. And I think it is an excellent description of you, Herman. You've been involved in this community as a businessman, and I forgot to mention this about Don, too, that a community thrives not just with the residents, but with the cooperative efforts of the residents, the businesses, the schools, all as partners. And certainly you exemplify it by your many activities. You served as president of the Chamber of Commerce, 1986-87. You helped to get the Chamber's permanent office now in Silverado Avenue. You've enhanced relations, I know this personally, between the Chamber and the government. So all along you've done these things uh, to enhance 
not only the chamber, the rotary where you've been active, but also this community. And I think the other interesting thing is Herman is not a resident of Cupertino, but he cares about Cupertino. He's helped develop the Shop Cupertino program. And today, tomorrow, and the next day, we have the world's greatest sale going on in Cupertino. <laughs> right. So Herman, on behalf of the city, I'd like to give you this award. The next recipient is in the field of education, Sam Bruni. When you first encounter Sam, and I'm, I'm using these words uh, particularly, when you first encounter him, you do not see him. You see a smiling face follow with a voice coming out saying, how can I help you? And I think this has been Sam throughout his 32 years of service in our community, in our schools, serving as teacher, uh, assistant principal, principal, and now a member of the district office staff. He has been involved in seeking outside resources for Cupertino schools. Uh, he developed, and this I think is uh, uh, a very important program, a classified employee recognition program. A lot of times in the schools, the teachers, the principals, and the administrators get the attention, but we know, those of us in the schools, the ones who keep it going are the secretaries and the janitors and the like, as in any organization. And I think the fact that you developed a program of recognition for them deserves commendation. He's helped move the Chamber of Commerce office. He was with the 4th of July booth uh, for the Bicentennial celebration, and he played a very active role in our Bicentennial Committee. He helped also organize Public Schools Week and the display of materials and goods created by the students, which brought the attention of the schools to the community. He's also been involved in project banking. So, uh, Sam, you've done many things, and you've done it all with a smile and a, and a sense of giving. And I think this is what we appreciate the most, and the students and the parents and the community wants to thank you for all your efforts. And the final category is cultural arts. I'd like to introduce Frank Nielsen. Frank? Many, a ti many times some of the award winners, uh, as we just finished with Sam and Herman, they're out there really visible in the community, some very active type things. Well, Frank is a leader also in the field. He is the founder of the Cupertino Coin Club. And uh, one of the things I think that has to be said for a coin club and activities like this, that sometimes people, uh, either through their other interests or their ability, say, no, I can't go out and play sports, do this, but I like coins, I like stamps. And I think this is one of the things with Frank, that he founded the Cupertino Coin Club. It is not only known in this area, it's known statewide, it's known nationally and internationally. A coin show is put on at De Anza College each year, and exhibitors, uh, salespeople come from throughout the state and throughout the nation. And I think in doing this, he is not only giving a service to the community, to his fellow uh, people, but he's also bringing attention to our community and the, uh, the recognition that has been given the club. And so Frank, on behalf of the city of Cupertino, we congratulate you and want to give you this award. This concludes this portion of the awards, and uh, they are ready for the entertainment, and luckily for you, I am not it, so. <laughs> Two of our award winners tonight will be further honored with Cupertino City Award, and that's given for service way over and beyond the normal expectations. Uh, before that presentation is made, however, we have a little entertainment, as I promised. So please welcome a wonderful storyteller and a Cupertino resident, June Legrand. I have to wait until...
until I'm plugged in. Good evening. I'm happy to be here. I understand that this is Cupertino's Awards Night, and I'd like to congratulate all of you winners. Has everybody won yet? <laughs> I live here in Cupertino, and I also have a radio program. Perhaps some of you have heard it. It's called The Living Spirit. And as you can probably guess, I'm a little bit Indian. <laughs> but tonight I'd like to tell you a couple of stories to kind of relax you. And one of the stories has nothing to do with Indians at all. But it's one of my favorite stories, one that I heard a long time ago. And it was in the Reader's Digest, and who wrote it, I cannot tell you. But this particular person who wrote it made a great impression on me because today we have a lot of struggles that we have to face between the four nations, the red, the white, the black, and the yellow nations. And so, because my memory is somewhat faulty in this area, I cannot remember what it was called. So I call it the research ship. There was this research ship, you understand, that was way up in the sky, and it had come from, we don't know where. But it had come a long way, and its main purpose was to discover and research the flora and the fauna here on this particular planet Earth. There were only two people in this alien spaceship, but they were very well versed in the countries that we call home. But they had no understanding, really, of what our customs were and what made us tick. And they, they could really understand the flora, but the Fuwana was another trip. And so they re realized as they went over, back and forth, from one country to another, from way up there, of course, that there were differences. They had, all, they had always noticed that over here, they would see all these pale ones over here. And over there, they would always see these dark ones. And it was always the same. The pale ones are always on this side, and the darker ones were always on this side. Well, they decided to go to the one place where this was really quite evident. And so they came back over the United States. And they were about three and a half, four miles up. And they zeroed in on the south of our country. In this particular case, it was Georgia. And this was some time before we got skyscrapers and everything. So it was really kind of natural. And they saw what they were looking for. Here was a couple of great bodies of people. There were, they were all on this one hillside, and they were dressed beautifully. They marveled at the different types of clothing that these people could think of. Although they didn't call them people, they called us humanoids or beings or what have you. Anyway, but it seemed like the same story was here. All the dark ones were over here, and all the light ones were over here. But they did notice some real differences in this particular one, that all the light ones sat on these rags on the earth. So they assumed that, of course, they mu the lighter ones must have an allergy because they couldn't sit on the earth, whereas the dark ones did. And then they noticed also that people were over here on this side were having picnic baskets, and they were eating and having a good time. And over here, these people weren't having a very good time at all. And then they noticed one other little thing which seemed to be the focus of attention. And that was, there was one little group, and there was a bunch of light ones and one little dark one that they had hung from a tree. And they wondered at this practice that they had seen before, and they wondered if this was their way of decorating the earth. Well, they didn't know what to do. And not a thing could they come up with that would tell them what this was all about. So they went and they decided, we will get one of each, a dark one and a light one. We'll bring it up for research. Because it seems like unless we have some hands-on activity here, we're not going to understand anything. So they went down there and they got a light one and they got a dark one. They brought them up to the stage, uh, up to the stage, up to the spaceship. 
a couple of days went by and they had made absolutely no progress. They still couldn't understand anything. And so they were sitting there together in the evening on the second day. And one said to the other one, he says, I really can't make anything out of this. For one thing, uh, I, can't, I can't discern any difference at all. Both have the same amount of legs and arms and their limbs and everything is quite the same. Were you able to figure out anything? No, I've run all the tests that I know of. I cannot figure out the difference. But I'll tell you what, I think we ought to sleep on it. You know, we'll work it out later. But for right now, why don't we eat the leftovers? Hello. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but it is a little bit of a lesson in uh, that sort of thing. As I said earlier, I am Native American. And one of the things the Indians do do is tell a lot of stories. Um, they do it to teach, primarily. In my own teachings, this is what I use a lot of, is stories. And a lot of it is aimed at the younger people. And a lot of it is just a morality story for anyone. The Sauk Indians tell a really good story and it's about um, a man and the painted turtle. Well, this particular man, the insertion of this particular man will show you the European influence on the Indian culture. What it is, is one day, there's a village a long time ago there was a village that lived by a beautiful lake. And there were high trees to give it shade during the day and comfort. And a lot of people lived in this village. And on the whole, they were pretty happy. But there was one person in that village who was a soft-shell turtle. And Turtle Man lived there. But he hadn't taken a wife because he was a ladies' man. He liked to flirt with all the women. Any woman that would look at him would give Turtle an opportunity to exercise his manly prowess. And he would flirt with everyone and anyone. It didn't make any difference if they were eight or 80. If they looked at Turtle, you were in trouble. Well, the women were having a really hard time because every time they went out to gather berries or roots, or, there was Turtle. He took wives away from their husbands. He took sweethearts away from their boyfriends. He just created a terrible, terrible time for everyone. It's, it got to the point where the men were afraid to go out hunting. And so everyone was getting really unhappy. Well, Jesus Man had moved into the, into the village. And Jesus Man lived there with his grandmother, who was a wonderful woman. She was just like Jesus Man. Very, very good. And their house was the cleanest in the village. Well, Jesus' grandmother had been approached many times by worrying mothers, fathers, parents, boyfriends, and everything. You've got to do something about Turtle Man. He's creating a havoc in our village. Our women cannot even go out of their teepee. Fathers are afraid to let their daughters go out. Furthermore, they're afraid to let their wives go out. So you've got to do something about that. You were sent here on earth to keep peace in the village. And it's your duty to do this. So Jesus man said, OK, I'll take care of it. So the following morning, he got up very early. And he took a bowl of corn soup that his grandmother had made. And she was a very good cook. He took the bowl of corn soup with him. And he started off for the heart of the village where Turtle Man lived. And on the way, he changed himself into a beautiful woman. Had lustrous, long black hair and a very comely figure. And so he went on as Jesus' woman. And he knocked at Turtle's house. And he said, Turtle, I brought you a present. It's some wonderful corn soup. 
that I have made myself. Turtle said, whoa, where have you been? I've never seen you before. Well, we, my grandmother and I just moved here not too long ago, and I'd like to make some friends. And I was told that you were very friendly. Well, as a matter of fact, you're right. I am probably the most friendly person here in this village. Please come in. Well, I don't think I can come in. My grandmother told me that that's how girls get in trouble. Well, no one will mind. We'll leave the door open. Very well, she went in. And he told her to sit over here. Well, Turtle Man went up and he sat on his bed and he got out all his paints and he painted a beautiful red spot on his forehead. And then he painted one on his cheek and then he painted one on the other cheek. He said, am I not handsome? Oh, yes, Turtle Man, you are very handsome. And so he continued, and he said, well, I think I would be very handsome if I made a part down the middle with this maple stick and I painted it red. And so he did. And he said, am I not handsome? Oh, yes, Turtle Man, you are very handsome. And so he went on doing that, and suddenly he spat into the fire, and it turned into pearls and diamonds. And he says to her, he says, Take those, there are plenty more where that comes from. And so as she was gathering up the pearls and everything, Turtle Man painted one beautiful red stripe around this leg. And he said, isn't that not gorgeous? She said, yes, Turtle Man, you are indeed a handsome warrior. And so he painted another red stripe around this leg. And he said, is that not also beautiful? Yes, Turtle Man. Well, would you think about taking a walk with a beautiful turtle man such as myself? And she said, well, I would, but you know how people talk. My grandmother says that's how young get in trouble. Am I not a good man? And he spat once more into the fire. And there again were more jewels for her to pick up, which she did. And he said, would such a handsome man like me have anything bad in my mind? I will protect your reputation. We'll go for a walk. So they went for a walk, and they continued on the walk, and Turtle was leading her out of the village and into the forest. She said, I don't think I can go any farther. My grandmother would not approve. He said, I am going to take care of you. Nothing is going to happen to you. Haven't you heard that before, any of you ladies? Nothing is going to happen, right? Nothing at all. And so they went on further in the forest, and Jesus' man put his arm around, I mean, uh, Turtle put his arm around Jesus' woman. He told her how beautiful she was and how lonely he was as a man without a wife. And would she sit down here by the tree with him? And as they sat down by the tree, and he said, would you lay down with me? Oh, I couldn't do that. But he had slid down a little bit more until he was reclining already. And so Jesus' woman slid down with him and lay in his arms. But Jesus' woman put a spell on him, and pretty soon he fell asleep. He got very sleepy. And when he was good and asleep, Jesus' woman got up and went over and got this log. Well, this was a very old log, and it was very well, had a lot of very well-worn paths in it by the red ants, the kind that will kill you if enough bite you at one time. And brought this log back to Turtle Man and put it in his arms. And then changed herself back into Jesus Man. Well, Turtle was sound asleep, and he had his arms around this log. And he's sitting there, in the, and he's hugging this log. And pretty soon, the ants were crawling all over his body. And he said, hey, don't do that. Don't do that. She said, oh, if you keep tickling me, I'm not going to be able to do what we came for. And Jesus man said, in a falsetto, of course, what was that, turtle? Oh, you know. And then 
He tried to go to sleep again. But he asked, I'm very warm from my body. He's very angry. And so they were crawling all over him. Crawling all over. And he was just really, st and they were starting to bite. And he just, all of a sudden, he jumped up and he looked at himself. And he had ants all over him. And he headed for the lake. He jumped in the lake. And as he was coming out, as he was coming out, Jesus' man stood there and says, don't go any farther, turtle. This is the payment that you get. Forever you shall go around on your belly. And so that all will know you, you shall forever be painted. And I want all of you men to take that into consideration. <laughs> if you don't watch what you're doing, you're going to wind up just like turtle. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's, uh, now we have the city awards. We have two, uh, I'll just sum up what the committee uh, said. It said that uh, these two persons' activities are so broad, they pro there probably isn't anyone in any community organization or group that hasn't been in touch with these two individuals. And it's the pleasure of myself and the council to uh, award uh, Margaret Martisich and Pat Jackson the uh, 1987 city award recipients. So please come down here. Before we, uh, there's one individual, a new city employee, I think that deserves at least a handshake, is Donna Cray for all her time and effort, and let's give her a big thank you very much. So, and on my, by myself and the council, my mouth is getting tongue-tied now, so I think that's the end of my speech. Uh, thank you very much for coming tonight. We have a reception afterwards, and uh, thank you again all for coming. Thank you.